My name is Scott Kafina. I am the Burlington County Prosecutor. Thank you for coming today. Before we begin, I'd like to thank the Florence Township Police Department and the Burlington County Prosecutor's Office Financial Crimes Unit and High Tech Crimes Unit for their skilled and dedicated work in conducting this investigation. On the evening of November 10th, 2017, Mark D'Amico, the boyfriend of Caitlin McClure, took a photograph of McClure and Johnny Bava Jr., a homeless man, standing at the Girard Avenue exit ramp on Interstate 95 in Philadelphia. Within hours of taking this photo, McClure and D'Amico created a charitable campaign on the website GoFundMe.com with the title of Paying It Forward. The campaign featured a sympathetic tale of a homeless veteran, Johnny Bobbitt, who came to McClure's aid one night after she ran out of gas at that location with no money. The story, as it was told, had Bobbitt cautioning McClure to stay inside the car and lock the doors while he went to a gas station. There, he used what little money he had to purchase a can of gas and bring it back so McClure can get home safely. The photograph taken by D'Amico and posted by McClure quickly became the face of the fundraiser purportedly to benefit Bobbitt following this alleged selfless act. The paying it forward story that drove this fundraiser might seem too good to be true. Unfortunately, it was. The entire campaign was predicated on a lie. Less than an hour after their GoFundMe page went live, McClure, in a text exchange with a friend, stated that the story about Bobbitt assisting her was fake. Specifically, she wrote, Okay, so wait, the gas part is completely made up, but the guy isn't. I had to make something up to make people feel bad. So shush about the made up stuff. She did not run out of gas on an I-95 off ramp, and he did not spend his last $20 to help her. Rather, D'Amico, McClure, and Bobbitt conspired to pass off a fake, feel-good story that would compel donors to contribute to their cause. And it worked, in a very big way, but it was fictitious, and illegal, and there are consequences. My office has charged Mark D'Amico, Caitlin McClure, and Johnny Bobbitt Jr. with second degree theft by deception and conspiracy to commit theft by deception. D'Amico and McClure surrendered last night here in Mount Holly and were released pending a December 24th court date. Bobbitt was taken into custody yesterday in Philadelphia where he awaits an extradition hearing. The stated goal of this campaign, as expressed on the GoFundMe site, was to raise $10,000 to provide Bobbitt with, among other things, first and last month's rent at an apartment, a reliable vehicle, and four to six months' worth of expenses. But this was an irresistibly heartwarming tale, and the trio's international media, media blitz to promote the fraudulent campaign convinced more than 14,000 donors to contribute a total of nearly $403,000 during last year's holiday season to help Johnny Bobbitt. We have been working with GoFundMe, which has provided its full cooperation to our office during our investigation. GoFundMe has informed me that in light of the charges announced today, it will be providing a full refund to all donors to the Paying It Forward campaign. Now, the net proceeds generated by the GoFundMe campaign after fees amounted to more than $367,000 which was electronically deposited into accounts controlled by McClure. By his own estimate, Bobbitt received approximately 75,000 of the money from D'Amico and McClure, but he wanted his fair share of the take and initiated legal action in August 2018 when his Confederates refused to turn it over. By that point, though, the money was long gone. As you will see in the probable cause statement we provided, by the middle of March, D'Amico and McClure squandered the vast majority of the money contributed by donors who intended to help a homeless veteran. Among other things, they bought a car, took trips, purchased high-end hand handbags, and hit the casinos hard. Our Financial Crimes Unit and High Tech Crimes Unit reviewed more than 60,000 text messages during the investigation, including thousands between McClure and D'Amico discussing the couple's financial woes, inability to pay bills, and mounting debts. During one exchange in March 2018, McClure lamented that the pair had less than $10,000 remaining from the donors to paying it forward. But D'Amico wasn't worried. He was certain the payday from the book deal they were pursuing would dwarf the money generated by the GoFundMe campaign. A few months later, when the dispute with Bobbitt became public, D'Amico was not dissuaded. 
Instead, he pitched a title for the book that would encompass the controversy, No Good Deed. Some might ask whether Bobbitt was an easy mark for D'Amico and McClure and wonder whether he understood that he was taking part in such a hustle. Let me say this about Johnny Bobbitt. He deserves our appreciation for his willingness to serve our country as a United States Marine, and he has our sympathy and concern for the homelessness he has experienced as well as his publicized struggle with addiction. But it is imperative to keep in mind that he was fully complicit with this scheme to defraud contributors, promoting the campaign in multiple media appearances and posing with D'Amico and McClure for a Philadelphia Inquirer story in front of a gas station that he did not buy gas from. The generosity of the individuals who were moved by Bobbitt's supposed good deed and their hope and belief that they could make a difference prompted them to send money in an effort to better his quality of life. But they were taken advantage of, and that is disappointing, because this type of case can damage the psyche of the public. A case like this can make generous people skeptical and a little more hesitant to help someone else in need. I urge you not to let that happen. There is a lot of hardship in the world, and it is commendable to show generosity to those in need. It is also appropriate to punish those who seek to evoke sympathy from others under false pretenses and then exploit the situation for financial gain. I advise those who are considering contributions to use caution and common sense when donating. That's all I have. I'll take any questions. Sir, what responsibility do we all have for wanting to tell this feel-good story, and how do we prevent it from happening in the future? Well, I think that's a question you have to answer for yourself if you're asking about your own responsibility. I mean, look, they put out a story that uh, hoodwinked an awful lot of people. And um, I'm not sure that the hard questions that were uh, that you might have asked would have necessarily uncovered the truth or not. So um, we had the advantage of an investigation that got to the bottom of this. If they, if, they yeah. started, if they hadn't started fighting over the money, would they have gotten away with it? It's a good chance they might have. Uh, McClure and uh, D'Amico have been released. Johnny Bobbitt is in custody in Philadelphia awaiting an extradition hearing back to New Jersey. Which one of the three actually came up with the kick? I know you said they sort of conspired, but who had the great idea that uh, we're going to play this thing out and then they all jumped on? Well, we weren't privy to every conversation that they had. The trio knew each other for about um, a month or at least before the campaign went live. Um, and I would say this, that all of them joined into it and all of them were on board as of November 10th when Johnny Bobbitt and Kate McClure took that picture and within hours that picture went live. Um, I would also note that in 2012, Johnny Bobbitt posted a remarkably similar story on his Facebook page out of North Carolina where he reported that he helped a woman who had both run out of gas and had a flat tire at a Walmart spent his supper money to get her on her way and, and um, fix her flat tire. I don't think that that's a coincidence. Did 